have a roll call. G. Jean Seuss. Bob Bro. Joyce Clam. John Brigham. Sharon Lindsay. Harry Sheila. Brenda Paquette. Lillian Nelson. Dot Mel Citizen. Connie McGuire. And Cheryl will be in in a minute. Please stand. Hand over your heart. After me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We also have a moment of silence for John Glenn, who passed away this week. Thank you. He was the astronaut. Yeah. Does this have a comment? No. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Do we have any communications? No communications. We need to approve or disapprove the minutes. I disapprove. Okay. On the roll call, I wasn't here. Okay, Jean? <coughs> of November. Of November. There's two sets. Is two oh, sets. So yeah, was there the, on the November meeting, I was not here. November. Is there anyone else that wasn't here? Is there any other corrections? Huh? Hearing none. Need a motion. Can I make a motion that we accept the minutes of the meeting for November eight? I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Now on the second. The second one was what date was that? October. Uh, we need to approve that one. And I believe everybody that was there that meeting is there today. Wait a minute. That's the meeting that the Brenda was not at. Right. Yeah. On the, the, was November, on the, the November meeting. Right, you were on the October one. So, on the October one, I need a motion to accept. I make a motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Joyce? Joyce and Brenda, was it? You know the first yep. one? Was Joyce and Brenda on the second? Yeah. Yep. Both of them? Yeah. She made the no, motion and I set second. Sharon yeah. made it. Oh. Sharon made it. My first one. <laughs> Don't confuse me. Okay. Don't confuse me. <laughs> I did. I, I kept you in there. You're welcome. Okay, I think that's about it. Is no director's report? Um, no, I only have a couple of um, things on updating on the, the programming. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go over the presentation. The rear door behind, um, in the kitchen. And the, and the back of the kitchen has been replaced. That probably was the worst door in the whole place, and that's been replaced, and, and it's wonderful. The guys from the town came to do it. Also, the door in the front has also been replaced in the dining room. So every door in this place has been replaced. Um, and there's a lot of doors in this place, <laughs> as we all know, any of us who've had to lock them. The furniture has arrived. It's all here. I don't know if anybody got to see it, but it is all here. We are, we thought maybe it lacked. Mm -hmm. 
Another chair. Some, I, yeah. think, I think a rug would be something like that. Yeah. I think that would make a yeah. rug would make it much more oh, love seat. That is a love seat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. How about just a couple of end tables? Yeah. 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 Was there a rug there before? Yes. Mm -hmm. and there was a lamp. It's gone. A rug for sure. Uh, well, we we a make it warm and looking. Because I know there's yeah. still money left over for the why capital don't, improvement count for that. Why don't we table it and let the committee talk it over and come up with some ideas and bring it to the next meeting? Right there. Need a motion. I make a motion that we table this now. Until the next meeting. Second. Who did that? Bob. Bob. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Um, the blinds are here. Um, they came Federal Express for a whole week. But we got a few a day. Um, the highway department is going to, uh, oh, the, not the highway department, the maintenance, um, facilities maintenance are going to come take down the old ones and Home Depot will be here January 6th to put up the new ones. So they're all here and that's been taken care of. Um, the Aging Mastery Program that Lucia headed did it for her. She did an amazing job. That has been completed and it was a graduation held and Ed Casanova was um, gracious enough to come hand up the diplomas and we did that last Thursday and I think there was about 12 people who completed the eight week series who were able to get um, gift cards and um, diplomas and they absolutely loved it and they're asking for it to happen again. Swanson Road Intermediate School came the choir came um, on Pearl Harbor Day. Channel 3 was here to film it. And um, if you can't go online and watch it if you missed it, because it was amazing. And um, I would like to, a special thanks to Lillian for um, coming up with the whole concept. Um, it really was everybody that was here, and the, and the whole room was filled, which was nice. Um, mm. The Lord came and made 200 calls, individual calls to people trying to get here because mm. we wanted that room to be filled, and that room was filled. It, it was amazing. What school were they from? Um, Swanson Road Intermediate School. Is that the old junior high? No, That's yeah. what they call it now. Yeah, Swanson they, Road. they changed the name. Weren't they good, Lillian? They were absolutely fantastic. And those children are marvelous. What voices. And she only had a couple of weeks to train them for this program. The music teacher was excellent. How many they, were there? They, uh, 60. Uh, but there were some missing. Them. They were um, probably nine, ten year olds. Yep. Wow. Fourth yep. and fifth grade, I think. Right. And then they made cards and they handed out the veterans that were here in attendance. And the rest are going to Brockton. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> excuse me. I passed out flags. The flags came in fine. I got them at Walmart and searched everywhere and finally I got them. And every child got a flag when they went out the door. Oh, they were that was nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. How many uh, cards did we issue? How many what? Cards, cards did they issue? I want to say. There were 60. No, but I mean, the kid, there were 60 cards. How many did they issue? Probably about maybe oh, 15, 20. Know, there was about 15 I didn't count the veterans. Here. The one, the veterans that were here, went to the veterans, yeah. and then the ones that didn't, they gave them to me for distribution. And um, 
I would just like to thank every member of the Council on Aging and FASCA for the gift of time all year long and the wonderful dedicated volunteers that we couldn't survive without you. It's very, very, they're amazing and dedicated, strong people and I want to thank you all for the gift of time and, and Happy New Year. And Bob, thank you for all you do with the newsletter. Month after month, Absolutely. one hour that you put in. I want to thank everybody here and Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you. Want to talk about the budget or no? Um, it is the same. Okay. We did it in the CD of the day. We don't really have anything. You can see that in the furniture account, there's still um, $3,500 that we can spend. Oh, is that what we're going to gonna use for the blinds or are you getting it from Fast? Uh, no, Fast to purchase the blinds. Okay. Yeah. They purchased the blinds, so um, there's still that much money in that account that can be worked. Okay. Other concerns? Are there any other concerns? We did cancel the Christmas party yesterday, unfortunately. Because of the snow. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, if there's a two hour delay with the school, a lot of people think that the senior center is closed, which, you know, ends up being very sparse attendance for that whole day. But we weren't closed. And, and by the, um, the afternoon, it was cleared up, but people just were uncertain to come out. Nobody wanted, it was very icy in the morning. People didn't want to fall, and you can't blame them. So we didn't have a big crowd signed up anyway, so we decided to cancel it, unfortunately. <coughs> Work group uh, report on newsletter, Bob. Um. The newsletter was quite, quite a challenge. Um, and most of you know from previous years that the printer wants it four days earlier than our normal time to send it. So uh, because they have to, liturgical printers, does a lot of church bulletins at this time of year, and they ask us to uh, do it four days earlier. So they wanted it, they want it this Friday, which is the 16th. And I um, just want to thank uh, some people who I don't write for the newsletter. I lay it out and coordinate it and edit it. How do you say? Editorialize it. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank uh, Richard Hedden, uh, who's our travel editor. He's done the whole front page for the January issue on all the information on the new trips that we got coming. He's a prolific writer. He's excellent. And then I'd like to thank Patty Hubbard, who is our nutrition manager who writes a column every month. Usha Verma, our outreach coordinator uh, for her column. Sometimes she gives me two columns. And I'd like to um, also thank Dorothy Milhoffer, the Auburn Dimension educator, who wrote two good columns for our January issue. And I couldn't get this out without their help. And a special thanks to Hel uh, Lillian, who every month writes her veterans news column. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never fails. Mm -hmm. And a special thanks to Cheryl Westerman, our acting director, for taking over. And she hasn't had five minutes to be off. And people are in her office two, two and three at a time. And I don't know how she has a chance to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> That's my report. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Around. Right. Does everybody know oh, Dorothy? I just want to put this one myself. Does everybody know Dorothy? Oh, no. Okay. Well, know her. My, my name is Dorothy Milhoffer. I, well, I want to thank Cheryl for letting me speak to you because um, I think it's important that you be updated on what I'm doing. 
I'm the part-time dementia educator, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about how I got here. I was uh, lived in New York City uh, when the World Trade Center happened, and I lost my job over 50. So I ended up coming to uh, stay with my family here um, in Sterling and in Norwich, Connecticut. So um, I started working at uh, Nichols College as uh, director of communications. There's one. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I? Am I showing sure. one? Yeah. yeah, that's okay. I'll look over. I'll look over her shoulder. Thank you. Oh, I can look over either shoulder. Whichever way you want. Oh, sorry about that. I'm very bad. At that. Um, and what happened was uh, I had to replace both my knees, and so I took an early retirement there when the president left. And um, during that period, um, I realized how important it was for seniors to stay active. I became involved in the Worcester Institute for Senior Education, and I put up a website called Senior Moments, named after, it's called Senior Moments, out and about with Jillian Jean. Jillian was my grandmother who insisted that all the women be educated, which was unusual for my family. And Jean is my middle name. And it, what it, the whole website is about is staying active and supporting each other in community. And so um, when I saw this uh, ad for a dementia educator, I was thrilled because I've been um, caring for my brother-in-law who has Louis, um, Louis body dementia. And uh, going back and forth, and um, you know, helping with laundry and cleaning and and that kind of stuff. And I know what incredibly hard job it is for caregivers. So uh, I I just really um, love uh, being in the center. I um, when I was. Uh, before the position, I was going to Shaw's and I would see, uh, uh, you know, I saw, for example, an older woman who was uh, at the checkout during rush hour, and people were grumbling behind me, and she she didn't know why spinach was three dollars, but she didn't know how to pay for it, and I knew she had an issue with dementia. And I I kind of shushed the people behind me, and you know, if somebody speaks up for people, they the other people will listen. You know, sometimes it just takes somebody to turn around and say, "I'll take care of it." You know, and going forward that way. And since then, I've seen many people in our community uh, who uh, have, are having problems, and it's just been at the forefront of my my mind. So what I did was I started on October third, uh, 250 hours. I have about 100 hours left of the 250. And what happened, because I started in October, which is a really bad time, because then you get you get Thanksgiving, you get Christmas, I immediately tried to get to some of the restaurants and some of the businesses before the rush hour. Uh, I The first thing I did really was uh, put out a direct mail piece. Thank, thank you to Dennis for working on my Excel labels. And uh, then I did some uh, community training. I've done a dementia, building dementia friendly faith communities. I want to show you just a little bit of that presentation. Thank you to Brenda for putting the, bringing those 18 people into the, the center in a very welcoming way. And uh, so that was on November 16th. And then I'm doing one with the library on uh, February 4th and 11th called Living Under the Cloud of Dementia. And that is what the second uh, piece is. You can see that's the beginning of the presentation. Thanks to Bob for picking out that image because I think that it really is very, very uh, beautiful, beautiful image. Uh, and then, uh, so that, and then I'm going to mention is anybody's business. That's going to be for local cable, and I'm going to get Chris Hugo's help with that. And then uh, in January with Deb Dubois, um, I'll be training the public-facing town staff um, because of the issues, for example, the clerk's office, you know, taking checks and that kind of thing, uh, giving them a little bit of training. And then in January and February, I hope to do training at the Auburn Mall. And what the Auburn Mall training will involve is um, I have met with the uh, general manager of the Auburn Mall, and we have been approved to, uh, when it's slower in the mall, to um, put these in the center uh, of the food court and have these around. And then I will be passing out training on, for retail shops on how to talk to people with dementia, 
how to communicate. And uh, I will be meeting with the head of the Sears and Macy's, which are the anchor stores. So I'm thrilled about that. Um, I have done a lot of one-on-ones, as you can see, but there are still many to go. Um, and um, to do that successfully, I put together with the town clerk's office some information about Auburn seniors that I'll show you. And that is really, you know, they really want to know what seniors have to say. And they want to know what, what the profile of the Auburn seniors are in. You should be very proud because 97.6% of Auburn seniors love living in Auburn. That was a survey that was done by Tufts uh, Foundation. And uh, that's something that, it, I mean, I have been to several senior centers and no senior center is as active as this one. I mean, this is a very lively group and you're really to be commended on that. Um, we have had some publicity in the Auburn news for two months. Uh, Telegram and Flake Town Flyer, thanks to Bob again for uh, two um, issues. And then uh, as far as event attendance, I've attended the Auburn Chamber of Commerce Best of Auburn, which that's where I met the um, general manager of the Auburn Mall. I was thrilled that I was able to talk one-on-one -on -one with so many people. Um, then I went to the Rotary Scholarship Breakfast that was at the senior, cent uh, the senior um, high and uh, spoke for a couple minutes there. Uh, I went to the Alzheimer's Association Conversations about Dementia, the Elder Services of Was Wa Worcester, Family Care, Giver Support Boys, that hard to say. And then on no November 14th and 15th, I addressed the selectmen as well as the town department heads. So um, there's still a lot to be done, uh, a lot coming up in January and February. But I want to show you some. PowerPoints, and unfortunately, I can't do it up on the screen. But what I'm going to try to do, and I hope you can see it also, I don't know if this will help at all. Sorry about the click, click, clicking away of my. Oops, let me get this one up instead. I'll try to make it as big as I can. I'm so sorry that I couldn't do this higher, but I wanted to show you, and I'll kind of read it, uh, that I try to tailor each presentation. The businessmen want to know more about how it's going to impact their business. And this is the one that's going to go on cable, but this isn't the full presentation I'm giving you. I, I deleted some of the slides. So the first thing uh, I'm doing is, is telling them that it's undeniable that, that aging is important to businesses because in the next two decades, the principal consumers are going to be businessmen. And I know you can't see these slides, but we'll go as close as possible. Uh, and the potential spending in trillions for seniors. Um, this goes, why are consumer aging ignored? Because one thing, ad agencies, they don't get fired for targeting, you know, young people. You do, you know, so there, there's a lot of pressure to market to the youth. And then I talk about the touch points, which is a, a marketing term for businesses, about marketing to the aging consumer. And specifically, we're focusing on cognitive issues. Um, and then this is the mass, the town of Auburn stats that I use when I come in. I always show them these first, that 65 and over, 20% of the Auburn population are seniors. And uh, it also shows that right now we can see 80 plus 23%. Every time the, the town clerk told me, every time the stats come out for the new year, these upper levels are getting higher and higher. Um, for Auburn, so that the ones over 70 are increasing the percentage, 80 increasing, of course, uh, 65 to 69 is 46 percent. But we do have some issues uh, as far as looking at at uh, indicators of concern, and one is the number of people with Alzheimer's. It's 15 percent. Uh, the number with rheumatoid arthritis, that's me, 52 percent. So our businesses have to be aware that they have to have access, uh, you know, that is for walkers, for canes, for people that need, uh, and therefore people like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying 99 because they really get it. They have the, uh, 
the special ramps, they have, they're very, very attentive to senior uh, um, customers that come in. Uh, they have big menus where you can, you can see visually the food. Uh, and so they really, they really are uh, very dementia friendly, as is Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts is a meeting place for seniors in the morning, there's no doubt about that. And they just welcomed me with open arms. I only had one company that wouldn't see me, and that was um, a donut shop. Um, let me see what's the name of that donut shop. I do, and they're closed now. So the, the response I have, I, has been wonderful. I really have been really happy. But then the percent that have fallen in the last three months is 6%. Now, I am meeting with Tess on Friday, and we're going to get specific information about calls and that type of thing, because I want to make sure that I have, I'm as accurate as possible. Um, and with cataracts, it's 60, 66%. So those are some concerns. We've got to make sure that businesses are, are friendly. I won't go into this, these are uh, cognitive issues of dementia, but then I talk about what is a business friendly, um, what is a dementia friendly business, and we use this chart, and then what we want people to do, we want people to train their employees on how to communicate, and I won't go into the specifics, we want to, them to audit their physical space to make sure it's accessible. And then last but not least, we want them to support employees experiencing, you know, they have caregiver stress. Because there, when you think of the dementia caregivers in Massachusetts, it's 332,000 unpaid care that they give is $4.6 billion. Now, there's a term called the sandwich generation where they're taking care of their parents, they're working, and they're taking care of the kids. And that's what we mean by a sandwich generation. Tremendous stress on them. Tremendous stress on caregivers. And then, um, last but not least, I want to make sure that they come to me for, uh, they come to the senior center and communicate with the senior center. One last thing I'll show you is, uh, let me just get this down for a second. Okay, this is what I did for Communities of Faith that, that Brenda gave a smiling face to, which I was so happy. Um, now, I try, it's really important that people come in and they're greeted with a warm and friendly face. And so this was a whole different approach because I did welcome me as I am. Churches are very important, an anchor for people. And um, we had 18 people who was thrilled about that. And what we gave them, uh, and I have a book for each of you, is this Oscar book. Um, and it has, it's wonderful because it really is about what happens to a person as they go through, uh, they experience dementia, because it is a progressive disease, it doesn't get better. And so it can be a couple weeks, it can be up to 10 years, but it is progressive. And so what happens when they start disconnecting from their family, their loved ones, the churches that they care about, their daily activity, it's devastating. And um, what, what's great about this book, it also talks about the caregivers. And uh, that is an incredible stress. And then in the back there is a uh, reader's guide. So we gave them this for their coffee place, where they have coffee. We gave them uh, literature on, uh, on dementia. And then we gave them books so they could have their own book groups and keep rotating that among their, their parishioners or their family, their members. Uh, what's interesting is U.S., um, our church size is 53 years, in England it's 61%. And then we want them to look at their worship space, how they engage their, their people with their older adults, um, and then I gave them some stories. One is about Jean. She used to make the best muffins and, and coffee cakes around. Got great, great, uh, wonderful uh, feedback from people. Oh, you're the best cook. And then she started forgetting the ingredients, for forgetting the peanut butter and the peanut butter cookies. And the kids started, you know, yeah, yeah. And so she got embarrassed. 
And so I said, well, how do you keep something like this engaged in what she loves to do? And so we talked about that as a group. And of course, if you stop them from doing something that they love, and it doesn't have to be in this capacity of being in charge of the whole thing, but if you stop, they get disconnected and then they get lonely. And loneliness is ARP's big, a big, uh, big uh, new push is to make sure that seniors aren't lonely. And then I did Ted's story. Uh, and so I had two stories, Bob came, he knows. And then we talked about some online tools because there's a wonderful way for churches called Lots of Helping Hands to help people that are, um, that are getting isolated and to make sure that you see their calendar and you can plug in people from the church. And last I talked to you about that. And let me get out of this. And I want to end with one thing. I told you that I'd only be 10 minutes. Um, I, I want to play something for you. It's something that I played um, for the, at the end of the um, dementia, the, the church uh, program, because I want people to know that, you know, anything happens when you have dementia is you forget, you, you lose your sense of humor. And so I, I kind of didn't want to show this at first because I, this woman, Mary Maxwell, gives these presentations. Uh, this one that she gave was to the Home Instead, which is a program for keeping seniors uh, at home as long as possible. And I decided to do it because it's, 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 she has a wonderful sense of humor. And I think that there's some stereotypes in there, but I think we need to keep a sense of humor about... Um, what we do as seniors, I know I put my um, put my TV remote in my uh, in my freezer the other day. I thought, oh, how did I do that? But anyway, it happens to the best of us. So let me just show you this. Okay. Does anyone else have to leave? This is only two minutes. It's only 7.30. Yeah, I know, but she has the bell. And it's by Mary Maxwell. She's getting... I would like to invite our dear friend, Mary Maxwell, to the podium. We are so happy that she can be here tonight. And we are honored to have her deliver tonight's invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mary Maxwell. It's hard to see, I know, but I hope you can hear it. Can you see that? Yeah, I heard her face. Ladies and gentlemen, as a new client of Home Instead and friend and former neighbor of Lori and Paul Hogan, I am so honored to be chosen to offer the invocation this evening. So, let us pray. God our Father, you know all that Home Instead believes in and strives for, and we ask your blessing on the Home Instead family, the management, the staff, the caregivers, and the clients. We are grateful for the way that everyone here tonight contributes to the success of the mission of Home Instead, and we ask you to continue to bless them and this food which we are about to receive. Amen. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, God. As long as I have the microphone. There are a few things I forgot to mention. First of all, just to introduce myself a little. Over the years, I've noticed that the two things most people want to know about you are the two things they're far too polite to ask. So let's get that out of the way. I'm 72 years old. As you know, we seniors are sometimes not very likable, let alone lovable. So 
So Lord, could you please continue to keep the people of home instead patient and aware of why we are the way we are. And Lord, please remind them that the thing about old age is that you don't get a chance to practice. This is the first time I've ever been old. And it just sort of crept up on me. There were signs. Random hair growth. That's special. Particularly that first time you go to brush a hair off your lapel and discover it's attached to your chin. You turn your left turn signal on in the morning and leave it on all day. Non-life-threatening skin growths large enough to name after deceased pets and relatives begin to appear. And neck tissue seems to develop a life of its own. Last November, I was afraid to leave the house Thanksgiving week.
I'm so sorry that took so long. Thank you for your program. Yep. Yes, and let me give each of you a book to share. Great. It's a wonderful book, uh, real fast reading. Please enjoy it. I have one for everybody. How about you, Mama, too? Sure. Bonnie, do you have comment to make? Citizen comment? Okay. I want to bring something up. Okay. Do you? No, I don't. Okay. Brenda does. Our, this is. This is. I'd like someone's opinion on this. On the second, first, and third Fridays, we have blood pressure, and the people come in and they get weighed. They have their blood pressure. Well, we have a scale that belongs in the Smithsonian, <laughs> and they have been having problems with this scale, working it and stuff. And a, a lot of you will know the scale with the weights and pushing it and everything. And I would like to make a motion that. We purchase a digital scale, which would be a lot easier for these people when they do the blood pressure. And would FASCA be willing to we will take it up pay the next for this evening? for the scale? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I, I would imagine it has to be put into the wall. I don't know how it's run. That's the scale. But that, over there. that's the scale over mm -hmm. there, and it really is. Yeah, it's time to get a new it's one. It's time to yeah, get a new one. Yeah, so we'll maybe we can send it to Historical Society. <laughs> But I think that's okay. a good idea. If Aska doesn't do it, could we put it in as part of the furniture? Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure they would do it. Aska will do it. Aska will do it. Don't worry about it. I need a motion to have it discussed at the Aska meeting. I second. We'll, we'll discuss it. You're going to make the first? Who's seconding? Who? I second it. Oh, well. All in favor? Aye. Well, it does work. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Anyone yeah. else have any comments? Hearing none, I need a motion for adjournment. Oh, I make a motion we adjourn this meeting now. Second. Thank you. Thank you. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, next meeting is January 10th. Thank you. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.